we talk about the superconductor, we say superconductor, of course, you have zero resistivity, has a Meissner effect when you go un under the critical temperature. It has three characteristics, critical temperature, critical magnetic field, and critical current density. Uh, below which you can still be a superconductor, above which then you become a normal conductor. Right? So last time you asked a question, how is the uh, critical temperature related to the critical field? Uh, so um, yeah, if you go with a higher uh, magnetic field, your uh, the temperature under which you will be superconducting will give will get lower and lower, right? But you just need to pay attention what people mean by critical temperature. If they actually mean this point, for example, like in this book, right? Tinkham, this is a very uh, famous book for superconductor. If you're interested, you should do a, a deep look. Uh, obviously, it indicates that this point is TC. Right, so they, they won't say or oh, TC at for HC, HC at this value equal to this, right? But but you understand they all have the effect. Yeah, so that's a very good uh, question. Okay, now then why do we have superconductor? Because uh, Cooper pairs are formed, and Cooper pairs are formed by two electrons with the opposite spin and momentum. They become bosons. This is very important concept because have spin zero. And so they can occupy exactly the same state. It's okay, a night fermion. So people will say this is like a macroscopic quantum object because uh, for a Josephson junction or Josephson junction or squid, right? Uh, which we won't discuss here, but it's a superconducting device. It's the in the order of micron, so it's pretty huge quantum object, right? Uh, so we can just describe the whole army, right? Because they march at the same phase, same direction. Uh, assign one quantum state, and then you have, of course, the amplitude and also the phase. And obviously, uh, the square root of the the square of the amplitude is the probability of you finding the Cooper pairs, right? So N S is what we usually have the in the order of ten to the power twenty three per cm cube, right? This is just the density of the electron, but we pair them up, right? So with superconductor, we can make a very uh, interesting uh, device called Josephson Junction. Right on the right is the Josephson Junction. You have two superconductor, just region A and region B. It doesn't need to be the different material. Usually they're the same material, like aluminum, niobium, right? And then insulator will be aluminum oxide. This is a common one. We use the integrator circuit. Then we introduce a lot of concept. First, this phi is the phase. This is the phase. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is the phase. It's the phase difference of these two electrodes. So phi is phi A minus phi B. Because we say that for the Cooper pair in each side, I can describe them as a collective object, right? So they have a phase. The difference of the phase is phi. And we also, and then the potential across this is VA minus VB. We also introduced a few concepts, for example, the magnetic quantum flux. This is the smallest flux you can have. This is quantized. You cannot go smaller. It's h divided by 2e, right? Phi not. And then we devise a quantity called flux, which is equal to the magnetic quantum flux uh, divided by 2 pi, or the whole term, we can call it reduced magnetic quantum, uh, flux quantum times the phase. Okay, this is just a quantity, right? So Josephson junction has this property. The current passing through it is equal to a critical current, which is a constant. Uh, it is which, which is the constant for this device, right? Uh, times psi phi. So the difference of the phase across the uh, two superconductors determine the current going through it here, right? And it can be very small when the phase difference is zero, you get zero. Or if it's very large, is the phase difference is uh, pi over two, then you get the critical current. Yeah. Is IC related to JC? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So JC is just a current density. Yeah. So just for unit area. Uh, yeah. So they are related because after that's why you cannot have current larger than IC because you are going to break the superconducting phase. Another thing is the. Uh, voltage, I mean, or, or the rates of change of the phase turn out to be proportional to the voltage across it. 
times 2e divided by h bar, which is just equal to uh, if you just divide if you just divide phi by this guy, which is just the reduced quantum flux, uh, then you will then flux quantum reduce flux quantum. Then you can see that v is just equal to the rates of change of the flux. Right? This is a little bit confusing, but just a substitution. Just memorize it. Uh, the voltage is just the rates of change of the flux. Uh, or in Josephson junction, you remember the voltage across it uh, cause a change of the phase difference across it, right? So these are the two, first Josephson junction, second Josephson junction. Uh, sorry, <laughs> first Josephson equation and second Josephson equation, not junction, okay? But this is uh, very instructive. It is V equal to partial phi partial T. Here I say this is flux. The so-called flux is actually just the first quanta times the phase and divided by two pi. But this one remind us the Lenz law, like what you said, right? Last time, uh, you create a bad EM wave you, uh, due to this, uh, what is the law? Faraday's law, right? The Faraday's law, uh, the rate the Faraday's law, right? You go back to electromagnetic, the curl of the electric field equals to negative partial, uh, yeah, just partial B will be okay. Partial B, partial T, right? Do I miss anything? Yeah, we don't have, uh, man, we don't introduce magnetic current here, right? So this is the related to that, right? Because partial first partial T, right? If you do an integration, because the you integrate the electric field, you get the uh, voltage, right? And then partial, and then you integrate the area, you get the flux. But anyway, this is related to the Faraday's law, right? I, I mean, this form, I'm saying this form. But in this particular case, we are not relying on the magnetic field. Here, the so-called flux, is just this quantity quantity and this is related to the kinetic indu inductance maybe I, I i say it too quick uh, i should say you have you, you you have the inductance when you have a rate of change if you, you when you have a change of the flux and that is the uh, energy stored in the magnetic field and here Joseph Sanchez, it has the energy stored in the momentum of the Cooper pairs because they're superconducting, right? So it is similar, but this is not due to magnetic field, but the form is very similar, right? So this is a good way to uh, memorize it. And then as we showed last time, then by using this concept, we know that, how, how do we do that? We say uh, di dt times L, equal to V, right? And that's why we say we come up with an effective inductance, which is equal to this big term. But the most important thing is you see that this is not linear. It depends on phi. So this is a long linear inductance, okay? Which will make it important for qubit. And at the same time, if you have the, uh, you, you, you work like an inductance, inductor, then of course you store electric field, right? Right. If I know if there's a current passing through an inductor, then if I don't know if you remember, the energy in an inductor is half I square divided by L. I, I think I'm right. I, I, I don't. I don't. Right. So if you have current going for inductor, the total energy is like this. So similarly, if you uh, have the current going through the Josephson junction. It's a superconductor, right? Conductor, right? Then it has a energy like this, right? So at this point, if you forget anything, I hope you can remember that Josephson junction, particularly in quantum, uh, in this uh, quant uh, quantum computing uh, qubit circuit, it's just like an inductor. So remember, treat it as an inductor, but it's long linear. You need to check this equation to find out what inductor is. It. And also, you remember it has the energy, just like an inductor. Once I have current going through the inductor, then I will have energy, right? 
And another analogy, I just, uh, you, you need to spend time to understand more. I don't have. But now I see another thing. I have current going through a regular inductor, then I have energy, right? Look at this. Do I have current going through the inductor? I don't see any current. These are all constant. But I have phi, and the phi determine the current, right? So you see that they are related. That's what I want to say. Okay, have this concept, and math is secondary, yeah. Uh, which one? We, how we know which is very noisy. Say again. How we get this phi? This one? Yeah. This one is the phase difference between these two conductor, superconductor. So in each superconductor, you have a group of Cooper pair, right? They are just wave function, right? So they all have a phi. Okay? And this phi for a, you have phi A, for B region, you have phi B, and this phi is just phi A minus phi B. Yeah, good. Okay, then 